Okay, we're on. Yes. And as you remember, you sw you swished that 0.9% sodium chloride solution to your mouth, yeah, back and forth, and besides your lunch, we also have some of your squamous cells or your cheek cells. And that's what we want. We're going to take the DNA from those cells. But first, they're diffuse in this solution of 10 mils. We have to concentrate it. And that's what we're using the centrifuge for. So I'm going to put your samples into the centrifuge four at a time, so I'll be here all night. And we'll centrifuge at a fairly high speed for about two minutes. And that will concentrate the cells to the very bottom. Start. And we'll end up with a little white pellet, which are hopefully mostly cheek cells that look something like that. And hopefully you didn't see the name, so that person won't be embarrassed, but it is cheek cells. Open the top. Resuspending the cells in a Tris EDTA buffer. The EDTA will chelate magnesium ions, which will prevent DNA sec enzymes from being active. Just pour off 300 microliters. And they are now numbered. Uh, according to a secret code that we'll share with you, so your, your sample will be known. And we're trying to boil them. Our water bath is at 74, but it's probably hot enough to denature the proteins and partially denature the DNA and prevent the DNA from being degraded, at least before we do the PCR. Okay, so as we talked in class, as you remember, we need certain ingredients in order to polymerize DNA in a test tube. We'll need Tac polymerase, I doubt you can read that on the iPod camera, but it's a little tube of the actual enzyme and it comes from a bacterium called Thermus aquaticus, which is a very heat-loving bacteria, which becomes very important for the, tac, for the PCR reaction. So we have tac polymerase. Now this enzyme likes to live in a, certain re, in a certain buffer, and so we have a tac buffer which provides all of the metal ions and exact pH and salts that this enzyme is most active in. Now if we're going to polymerize DNA, what do you need template DNA? Well that's boiling over at the water bath way over there. But of course the other thing we need is primers. We need a primer for both, both strands, the forward strand if you will, and the reverse strand. So these are DNA oligonucleotides that have been synthesized uh, chemically that Todd has ordered uh, for this particular region of the genome. So we've got buffer, we've got enzyme, we've got primers. We need one more thing to build DNA and that's the di deoxynucleotides. And so they come in a little test tube, we can buy them. And these are deoxy ATP, deoxy CTP, GTP and TTP, all four nucleotides. Um, in, in a mixture. And of course these are triphosphates because you need the triphosphate in order to catalyze this reaction. Remember that that drives the energy that's required to synthesize a polynucleotide chain. And each of those have to be in a particular um, concentration so we have worked out for each reaction, our reaction volume is going to be 50 microliters and so we'll have each of these um, reagents in a particular proportion. Now we have 65 reactions or so, but I'm just at bumping it up to 70 to make sure there will be enough solution. We're going to run these PCR reactions on a 96 well plate, and so each of your individual samples will be loaded in one of these wells. And once these wells are loaded, we have this fancy sealing film, and we're going to seal these reactions um, so they're absolutely airtight with this fancy adhesive film. Now of course we have to seal them, right? Because the samples are going to be boiling every cycle. Every time we start a new polymerization reaction we have to denature the DNA strands. In order to do that we're going to boil it. And if we didn't seal the tubes, what would happen to all the buffer? Spoil away. So we have to seal them down. And you're going to have to say anything. Mm -hmm.
how long? Five minutes? Sure. High throughput. I love this pipe header, so I have to be very careful not to touch the templates that are in there, otherwise I'll contaminate samples. I also have to keep track of where I am. Three, four, five, six. So I'm pipetting in the master mix. That's a mix that has everything except template. Seven, and within each reaction, we already have your templates. Eight, and Boba Fett, whoever you are, you're right here in number nine. A, there we go. And I will add the magic tape, magic sealer. To remember how to do this. I haven't done one of these for a while. Oh, there we go. So it's adhesive on one side. I have to square it up to make sure there's enough to go all the way across. There we go. We made it. And use the high tech sealant device, a finger. And I'm trying to make sure I've got a good seal. With every two. This is actually very fancy stuff. It's designed for something else because this adhesive sealer is um, light transparent, even UV transparent, and that's for doing something called real time PCR or quantitative real time PCR. If you want to know more about it, ask me or just Google it. We don't have time in class to talk about it. We've got the machine in here, right? Yes, we do. And we're actually doing that experiment with students in third year. So if you stick around, you can do it yourself. OK. <clears throat> so I like to just give them a bit of a mix, although we're boiling these things for another three minutes just before the thermocycling reaction starts. I'm sure that'll do plenty of thermal mixing all by itself. Nevertheless. Okay, we're ready to roll. Shove that baby into the thermocycler. Close the lid. It's got a hot. Can you see the graph on here? Top. Yes, we can. We got a glare. Can you see it? <laughs> that is. Can you glare? I can. There we go. That'll work. Yeah. So we're going to start this cycle. Does it show the graph though? It will show the graph in about four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, number one is first cycle. We're going to go 40 cycles. It's not going. Okay, so we're going to load your samples now. And I have already poured a gel, a cast of gel here. This is an agarose gel. And it's just like pouring jello in a mold. And if you can look carefully in the film, I don't know if you'll see it, but you can see some holes in that well in, in the gel. And those are the wells that we're going to pour our DNA into, just like we saw in class. So I just loaded the ladder. That's the DNA marker that will tell us, it's a reference point, we'll be able to determine what the lengths of each fragment are. And now I'm going to actually load your samples. So. Mixing loading buffer in with each PCR reaction, taking a small aliquot of that reaction and loading it in the gel. One down, 59 to go. There's a few. 